Hello, and welcome back. I'm Jade Nova, and I'm here to review Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Wow, this was a long read. Or listen, because, uh, I'll be honest, I got the audiobook, um, 13 hour long audiobook. <laughs> And I gotta say, it really helped grinding through uh, Japanese RPGs when I need to level up and power up my characters in any other RPG game. Because that's what I do. I listen to podcasts, different audiobooks, music, just to help me slog through just grinding because, say, a boss is too strong. Or a grinding sake because I want to breeze through this game as a, just a beast. But on to Lord of the Rings. J.R. Tolkien has written what is the progenitor of modern-day high fantasy. Even to this day, we see of his effect of his works, like in Dungeons and Dragons, from the races he create or not created, but redefined and tooled them in a way which we are familiar from Hobbits. But it's probably only no they're only known Hobbits in Tolkien verse or Middle Earth universe, um, everywhere else it's halfling. Basically the same thing. <laughs> it's a different name for the same thing, like, say, rabbit, hare, ghoul, zombie, uh, lichen, werewolf, um, furry, sonic fan, um, and it just, it, in of man, and, uh, elves, high elves, wood elves, he did that, um, and uh, dwarves and many other th creatures and things he really did uh, goblins and orcs goblin orc kind of kind of like that um it goes along with the rabbit hair type thing um this story it is it's a slow one um but it is a very minute articulate detailed work of everything that's happening happening in the scenery from the, the smallest detail is described, and I really appreciate that. And uh, stories I've heard or uh, seen on uh, documentaries and how Tolkien was very anal retentive on his writing, like, if he didn't like it the way it was going, he would scrap it all and start from the beginning. He was very... Uh, he sounded very OCD-like in his work, and just, he wanted to just... He just wanted to work on it till it's that he thought it was suitable or per perfected. <sighs> Pardon me. Let mm, me get a sip of coffee here. <laughs> it's pretty late at night or early, really, really early morning. Uh, the only time I get to do this because you know don't have nephews or my parents just bopping around the house making too much noise. So you know I'm gonna try. Pump out a couple more videos tonight and uh, render those and uh, post them <laughs> for your people's enjoyment because I do like doing this for you people. And uh, to my 60 currently 60 subscribers, thank you. Um, when I reach 100, I'm uh, do something special probably. And uh, stay tuned for October. But Lord of the Rings now, I'll whore myself out and plug myself later. <laughs> It is definitely, if you're a fantasy fan, if you like anything in the realms of fantasy, if you just like the films, flawed as they are of dumbing down the characters, and uh, making Gimli, Pippin, and Merry just comic relief, and adding that certain grittiness and taking out the color, which every character has, like leather straps and belts and buckles, not the colorful tunic suits, see, but I, I can understand the washed out and making making Frodo a complete useless pussy that all he does is he gets stabbed. Uh, Frodo in here is far more competent, and in the films they don't mention it's like 17 years later after he gets the ring from Bilbo. Because, uh, I don't know, maybe people are a phobic to or like, I don't know, they can't accept an older hero who's like 33 years old or something like that. Because 33 is like the reaching uh, age of adulthood for hobbits. Um, I don't know, it just is. 
But I really do love the Hobbit culture. I love that idea of just that rustic, just relaxing, have a good cup of tea, and just having a smoke of a pipe. It just, it's a very relaxed and mundane life, that which seems very content and happy, and just, I don't know, I just enjoy it. I just love the look of it, and the feel of it, the description of it, is just, it seems very quaint, and I, I enjoy that. And we get other worlds of man who seem more militarized and more stuff like that. We get some elves which are more toward the arts and and magic. And we get the dwarves who are more inclined to uh, manufacturing and probably more technical skill than elves. Um, overall, it's just the fantastic. I don't want to spoil anything because it's so much detail in the characters and you really care for them and the depth and just so many other great things in this book. And, and it was split up in two books and put into one volume. Well, how Tolkien wrote it, he wrote all three books in 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 like over the course of years of of course, and like he once made it as one big book and it was just like over a thousand pages long. So the publishers had it split them up into six smaller books or two uh, into three volumes, which were like two books in one, which they're kind of like that. But like we all know, three books which are each three hundred pages. Uh, give or take. I'm not gonna give the, like, numbers, I'm not entirely sure, but, um, after this, I'll be, no, I have to read, or listen to the audiobook of The Two Towers, then after that, of course, uh, Return of the King, then The Cimmerillion, which is kind of like the Bible of Middle-earth, you know, it describes how everything was put together, the creationist story of what happened, and stuff like that. Then, uh, his unfinished work, which his son worked on too, was the children of her. The audio on the audio book is read by Christopher Lee. So I'm like really looking forward to that because I love Christopher Lee. Um, who doesn't? Who doesn't love Christopher Lee? Um, fantastic voice. Um, just there's so much to describe here, and just how much that this is a great sequel, or you know, like. Uh, continuation of what he began in the in the Hobbit and uh, it, it we've given a much broader scope to more the politics and the more how the world works or their world works in in just this kind of small self-contained story which was the Hobbit and here it just expanded and exploded of like the whole world of uh, Middle Earth which I thought was fantastic um <laughs> I'm just some some guy get to say, my God, these books are actually good. Of course they are. They wouldn't be as popular as they were. They wouldn't be made into three major motion picture films and the uh, new Hobbit film coming out this year or next year, split into two parts. Um, uh, there's just so much good stuff in here. If you're a fan of just fantasy in general, you should check these out. If you're a lazy fuck like me, get the audio books. Torn them like I did. Um, but uh, that's what I did. Put on headphones. I played an uh, RPG, uh, whatever I got here. I don't want to see the game because you know I'll keep you guys because I'm an RPG whore. And I, uh, there's nothing really else I can add. Anything I'm forgetting is just it. <laughs> um, there's a joke before that in in The Hobbit, the first one, and you think in the terms of uh, in uh, role playing. My god, that group was so lopsided, there are just so many dwarves. There's like 14 dwarves, a hobbit, and, an, and, a, <laughs> and a wizard. And it's just like, my god, that is the the biggest and most unbalanced role-playing party ever. And here it's a lot more balanced with like, is it seven of them? Yeah. You got, Frodo, you got four hobbits, two men, one elf, and uh... One dwarf, one wizard, which I forget what his race is, but they're like basically angels of the universe, uh, of of the world. What what Gandalf is, he's not a man. And uh, here we got Saruman of many colors. Another thing that Peter Jackson changed, where where his coat was always, his robe was always in flux of different colors. And I guess he wanted to have that not realistic, but more of that restrained look to his films, though he still had the giant ghost army in Return of the King, which uh, I haven't read the... the, the re I still haven't read Return of the King, but even when I saw that in theaters for my birthday at IMAX or 
I, I still thought that was kind of silly, just ghost army. Green ghost army. <laughs> but, uh, enough of that. Um, tell me if you read the books, um, how you enjoyed them, how you got into them. I remember my friend Logan in middle school, like, he read the books in, like, sixth, no, like, eighth grade, and he just plowed right through those in just these thick volumes. On top of that, he was reading Stephen King. Just, like, <laughs> the kid was so smart. <laughs> me, I was like, Pfft, books. Now I'm, like, regretting I didn't read as many books as I did back then, but... I don't read that many books. I get the audiobooks generally because I'm multitasker. You know, I have to be doing five things at once or I'll go insane. You know, I always have to keep my brain stimulated. You know, so the voices don't come and tell me thing to burn things. <laughs> but, um... Uh, please tell me in the comments if you've read Lord of the Rings. What did you think the films with the changes or anything? I'm... Always happy to hear other people's experiences and uh, they had with the films or Lord of the Rings video games. I'll probably review those too in the Hobbit video game and other things if I get the cash. Uh, 53 cents. In joke. Um, yeah. Uh, may the forces of darkness become confused on the way to your house. And uh, goodbye. <laughs>